Hello everyone, you are watching Scardia.com and I am Dr. Hamad Adar. Today, we will be discussing two very important autoimmune systemic diseases which affect the spine of the spinal cord as well as the vertebrae. Now, as you know that mainly the rheumatoid arthritis and enclosing spondylitis and autoimmune systemic problems and they affect a lot of other areas and organs of our body. But we will be briefly focusing how they affect the cervical spine. We were discussing how the rheumatoid arthritis causes basically there's a there's a pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis or it causes a penis formation which leads to subaxial subluxation, cervical atlantoaxial subluxation and basilar invagination. Briefly we'll be discussing what are the actually uh, x-ray findings of especially the with associated with periarticular osteopenia as well. Then we'll be looking at the X-rays and how do the X-rays on the cervical spine, especially the lateral flexion and extension view appear and what are the different findings we need to pick out so to diagnose the case of the rheumatoid arthritis. We will be discussing how it starts with initially the neck pain, there may be symptoms of cervical radiculopathy, may be associated with the symptoms of cervical myelopathy as well and when is we need to go in for a surgery and when we need to just take it as a medical condition and to go for the DMARDS as well. Then briefly we will doing for the measurements, what are the measurements we need to take out especially what is RD that is anterior atlantodense interval and party that is posterior atlantodense interval and what, what are the significance whether there is increase or decrease in both of these values and what is its uh, mainly indications when we RD goes above 10 mm or party goes below 10 mm that is where we need to go in for some form of a surgery to stabilize the spine. Then we will briefly discussing as you know the rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic problem and there is actually it's main this problem uh, it's kind of a mainly managed by the rheumatologist and we will briefly discussing the medications which usually the rheumatologist advise and for the orthopedic surgeon it is mainly the complications of the rheumatoid arthritis which we have to deal with especially in the case of spine. Then we will be discussing the indication for surgery and when we need to go for surgery and what are the different mechanisms by which we can fix the spine either posteriorly or anteriorly. Then again the next problem we will be discussing would be ankylosing spondylitis. It is also an autoimmune systemic disease, multiple other specialties may be need to involve to treat the patient as a whole, you need to get opinion of other as well. But what we will be dealing in the case of uh, enclosing spondylitis is how it affects actually the cervical spine and what are the different criteria, how to diagnose the patient who comes with usually a low back pain and off and on with muscle spasm and increased problems with the neck and lumbar spine movements. Then we will be discussing what are the different uh, classical signs of the increased cervical kyphosis and progressive cervical kyphosis or it can be used to actually diagnose the ankylosing spondylitis. Once we have diagnosed it, we need to assess what is how much it is actually progressed and how we can halt the progression of this disease. Especially, we need to we'll be discussing the X-rays. How we have to differentiate uh, X-rays of ankylosing spondylitis from dish or diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, and it's important to differentiate there because then the treatment regimen actually changes. Then we will briefly discussing the treatment modalities which may be include the non-pharmacological treatments such as exercise and physiotherapy, briefly the conservative or pharmacological therapy which may be required for the treatment of enclosing spondylitis and lastly we will be discussing the vertebral osteotomies which we may need to do to eventually once the kyphosis progresses to a certain level where it's, it results in spinal cord compression then you need to go in to fix the spine because it's mainly the uh, actually we'll be discussing how to handle the complications of enclosing spondylitis and cervical spine as well as in the lumbar spine and this is what it is important to understand that it's not a spinal disease it's an autoimmune systemic disease there are different modalities of the treatment which may require involvement of other specialities whether it's rheumatoid arthritis and it's enclosing spondylitis but the role of an orthopedic surgeon is to deal with the complications which may be associated with the 
rheumatoid as well as the ankylosing spondylitis and then lastly we will be discussing briefly the osteotomies which may be required in ankylosing spondylitis such as uh, pedicle subtraction osteotomy, Smith-Peterson osteotomy or the vertebral resection osteotomies as well. To watch all the, these uh, videos especially related to spinal pathologies and all the uh, content of the orthopedic surgery and different other specialities go to www.scudi.com and watch all the medical resources available over there. Thank you very much. Keep watching Scardia.com.